Hi, I'm Erin Viscara, and I'm a lecturer of sociology in the government and sociology department here at Georgia College. I teach a wide array of sociology courses. One of my favorites is the GC1Y course. The GC1Y course across the university can take many forms and talk about a lot of different topics. But in the sociology program, we chose to teach it as a social problems course. So traditional social problems courses look at a vast array of social issues, but I've decided to hone in and focus on one issue in particular, which is bullying and shaming. And most people think that bullying is teasing and name calling and maybe kids getting into a little bit of a scuffle on the playground. Um, but we really dive deep into this issue and look at a lot of different forms of bullying. So it can include teasing and name calling and physical bullying, but we also discuss under this large umbrella of bullying, things like ostracism, mean girls, school violence and school shootings, fat, fat shaming, sexual shaming, body shaming. Um, so there's a lot of different issues that we talk about um, within the semester in the course. But one of the main things that we focus early on is patterns of bullying um, and how people choose to approach or deal with these issues of bullying. And so what I present to students is uh, work uh, based on a sociologist named Jesse Klein, who wrote a book called The Bully Society in 2012. And so she looked at patterns of, of bullying um, that also contribute to things like school violence and school shootings, and then how Americans and Europeans handle bullying because bullying can lead to serious uh, consequences for, for students. And so what she found is that there are two distinct approaches um, to handling bullying. One is the predominantly American approach called the strict father. And then the predominantly European approach is the nurturant parent. And so in the United States, we're going to see the strict father approach, which is more of an individualistic approach. Um, American culture is very individualistic. We tend to think that any accomplishments that you have is a result of your own hard work and that any uh, failures you might have are also a result of your own personal shortcomings. And so this logic is applied to how we handle bullying in schools. And so what Americans do is they set very strict rules and harsh punishments for individuals who break those rules. So one example of a strict rule that you might see with the strict father approach is the zero tolerance policy. So if kids um, get in a fight, if they spit on someone, they push someone, if they bring something that a weapon to school or something that even resembles a weapon, um, they're going to be met with swift and harsh punishment. So things like out of school suspension, in school suspension, and even expulsion or reassignment to alternative school. And so what Americans think with this strict father approach is that, you know, if we lay down the law early, um, we set these really harsh uh, rules that people, individuals will weigh the costs and benefits of these rules. And it's like, well, you know, I could bully this kid, I could push this kid, but then what will happen to me is I'll get suspended or worse. And so they're hoping that this dissuades um, students from bullying other students. They also will install things to reinforce these rules like cameras in classrooms, metal detectors, school resource officers. And so these are all um, signs to students that these strict rules are in place, that we're watching your behavior, and it's up to you to make the right choices because you can suffer really serious consequences. They also teach students, and we see this um, not only in schools, but if you think about a lot of uh, movies and television shows, um, when kids are bullied, they're often told that they need to handle it themselves and that they should stand up to the bully. And then once the, they stand up to the bully, the bully will back down. So if you're um, an 80s baby like me, uh, you might remember things like The Karate Kid, where Daniel, or now Cobra Kai, the new spinoff show, where Daniel, you know, is, is told that he needs to learn karate because he's got to stand up to Johnny Lawrence, who's a huge bully. And, um, you know, once he stands up to him in the movie, then Johnny Lawrence backs down and says, oh, well, Daniel's, you know, a great guy. And that's, it's not just in The Karate Kid. You know, we see that in a lot of movies and television shows um, where kids are taught to stand up for themselves and the bully will eventually back down. So again, the strict father approach is very individualistic. Um, it's handle it on your own. Um, 
when you we lay down these rules and it's your choice do you want to break them or not but if you do you're going to suffer very serious consequences in contrast the european approach is more community based so it's not this handle it on your own um, it's more of you know everybody work together to create uh, a community and a culture that looks down on bullying and so what European, the European approach, the nurturing parent approach argues is that children grow best and do best with like loving attachments with the community. And so the nurturing parent approach wants to get everybody involved to where the strict father approach says handle it on your own, think about your co the consequences of your actions. The nurturing parent approach on the other hand um, wants to get help for everybody involved. So it's not just the bully and the um, the bullier and the bully. Um, it's everybody that is a part of this interaction. So this is also a very, um, as part of the community-based approach, um, they want to involve especially members of the helping professions like social workers and counselors because they believe that people bully um, or don't stand up to bullying or create a culture uh, where bullying is seen as unpopular, um, that there are like root kind of causes, especially for people like the bully in particular. Um, we've all been through school and we know that, you know, typically kids bully because there's something else going on. Maybe there's some issues at home, like their parents are getting a divorce. Maybe they're not doing very well in school. Maybe they're insecure about something themselves. Um, they don't like a particular feature of their body. And so um, they feel kind of a loss of power and helplessness. And to get that back, um, they bully other people. And so the nurturing parent approach wants to get to those root causes. So they argue that you know the bully needs help um, through counseling and other community resources. The person who's being bullied, you know, that that's um, they're a victim, that bullying can have serious mental um, health consequences, and so they also need help on how to address and deal with bullying. But it doesn't stop there. Also, people that view the interaction, other students, um, you know, they also need help in counseling, maybe some confidence to step up and say, hey, it's really not cool to bully Joe. Um, you should stop that. I like Joe. He's my friend and he doesn't deserve this to create a culture where bullying isn't acceptable. But they also argue, too, that um, parents need help on how to talk to their children, whether they're the bully, the one being bullied or the bully themselves. Um, how to deal with their feelings and how to handle conflict and issues, and then also teachers as well. Um, we watch a documentary every semester where, called Bully, where one of the assistant principals um, says, you know, how do I stop this? I don't even know where to begin to deal with these issues of bullying. And so teachers also need resources or things in, in their toolkit of how they can handle the issue of bullying in schools. And so I give this, um, you know, these two different approaches to our GC1Y students. Um, and one of the main things with GC1Y is this is a critical thinking class. So I give the, them these two arguments and then I ask them to consider these two approaches and design a workshop or a course uh, story time that they can present to young children that deal with issues of bullying. And I tell them to consider the strict father approach the nurture and a parent approach and create a story time for kids that deals with um, bullying or shaming. And they can pick anything that we talk about in the course. So it can be name calling, teasing, leaving people out, um, other issues of diversity and inclusion, mean girls, um, you know, be, being involved in the community. So sometimes they choose to focus on community helpers, people that can offer support. Um, and they create story times for these kids based on what we learn in class and then learning how to take that material and think critically about it and boil it down into a package that young children can understand. So I have a few pictures here um, that I'd like to show you of some past story times that we've done. So um, you can see in this top um, center photo that hopefully they, there's little, you can see the dogs that are in there. And so um, my students, this was the last story time that we did before the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, we did a story time on uh, community uh, service animals. So with the service animals, um, we read a story where they talked about a young boy uh, who was in a wheelchair that needed a service 
um, dog to help him get around school. And they really focused on inclusion. And then we asked the Milledgeville service dogs to come in and read with the children and spend some time with them. And so it's always really uplifting to watch the kids' faces when these dogs come in and they get to pet them and they get to talk to them and read with them. And it really kind of brings it home um, about, you know, children that, that need these animals to be able to function in school and how we should think about them and include them in what we do. Um, some of the other um, activities, uh, students choose to focus on team building. So the picture was spaghetti and marshmallows. Um, that's where students are, are working with kids to encourage team building and problem solving and coming together as a group and including everyone. Um, there's also a picture on the left where students made a chain where you write things, positive things about yourself and others and put them together put the links together to form a chain to show that you know we're a community and we work together we don't isolate um, and bully people you know we're all part of a group and we should all come together and then we hung the chain up at the Mary Benson library which is where we do some of our story times uh, we also do story times at the early learning center um, in Milledgeville as well as Creekside uh, Elementary in Milledgeville as well which I think is now called Lakeview Academy I've been around a while so I get the names confused um, and so we really enjoy that because, you know, it takes the material that we learn in class and we get to apply it and it's more hands on. And so students can really see, hey, let me think about these two approaches. You know, how do I want to frame it? What do I want to focus on? And what are some solutions that I can offer to young children to address the issues of bullying and shaming in schools? So this is one of my favorite classes. Um, this is one of my absolute all-time favorite projects to do. And I'm really happy that I can share my students' successes with you.